Okay, guys. Hi. In this video, we will see the Gaussian distribution. All right. So this video is not at Nandi. We will see what is Gaussian distribution. We will see the curve and its properties, and we will see exponential distribution. That will be just very basic. And for Gaussian distribution, we will solve one to two problems. So first, let's start with the Gaussian distribution. So what is Gaussian distribution? Okay. So if you are having a continuous random variable x, okay. So for this continuous random variable x, the Gaussian distribution it is given by this particular formula. Okay, f x is equals to one by root over two pi sigma exponential minus x minus mu whole square divided by two sigma square. Okay, so here x it is the continuous random variable. Here you know mu it is the mean of the distribution. Sigma square it is the variance of the distribution. And sigma, it is the standard deviation of the distribution. All right. Now you see when you will substitute x minus mu by sigma to be z, then what you will get? You will get the probability of distribution function for a normal distribution. Okay. You can say you will get the standard form of the normal distribution. So when you will do so, you will get it to be one by root over two pi exponential minus z square by two. So here, the value of what? The value of The mean that is mu mu is equals to zero and sigma the value of the standard deviation is one. You can see when you will put one, when you will put zero, this is one. So it is one by root over two pi exponential minus z square by two. Clear? So this is how you can get the standard form of the normal distribution. You will have to remember these two formulas to solve the problems. Basically, you need to remember this formula. All right. So now we will see normal curve and its properties. So this is very basic. It's not that tough. Just listen to what I'm telling and see each points. Okay, and if possible, note down the points. Take a screenshot and you can note down later on also. Okay. So first of all, when you are drawing a curve between the probability distribution function f x and the random variable x, okay, then you will get a curve of this pattern. And this curve is for the Gaussian distribution. Okay, so here you see the first property is that this curve will extend from x equals to minus infinity to x equals to plus infinity. Okay, second is the curve will be symmetric. The curve will be symmetric about x equals to mu. About this point, the curve is symmetric. Okay, that is probability density function. It is symmetric about The mean you can see clear x equals to mu mu is the mean okay at this point the curve is symmetric that means the probability distribution function is symmetric about the mean this is what you can say okay the third is the curve attain a peak about x equals to mu mu okay about this point x equals to mu the curve is attaining a peak you know that normal curve it is a what unimodal Okay, it is unimodal and symmetric. Unimodal means it is having only one peak. All right, so you can say the curve is having a peak at x equals to mu, and the peak value. Okay, the peak value is what for f max f x maximum. It is one by root over two pi sigma. Clear? So you can put x equals to mu, and you can see in that particular formula also. When you will put x equals to mu, what you will get? The formula was exponential x minus mu. When x equals to mu, then the exponential term will be entirely what? It will become e to the power zero. Yes or no? E to the power zero. So that is one. And finally, we'll have one by root two pi sigma. Clear? So this is the peak value. Okay? That is the maximum value of the probability distribution. Okay? Next, let us see. When you will change x on both the sides, okay, from mu, then the probability distribution function decreases rapidly. You can see this is that is when you will change the value of x about the mean means on the left and the right side, okay, okay, from both the sides, from this side and the that side, right side, okay. This is the position at x equals to mu. So now when you are changing. The value of x. Okay, when you are changing the value of x on both the sides, you can see the probability distribution function is decreasing. From this graph, you can see. Okay, and it is decreasing rapidly. So this is also a very important property. Now you see when the value of sigma, this part is said to be sigma. Okay, this part is the 
sigma so when the value of sigma will increase okay when the value of sigma will increase in that case the peak value okay the peak value fx maximum it will decrease why it will decrease so that this curve will remain what constant when this sigma this is increasing okay you can see when this part is increasing in that case the value of this fx maximum this peak is decreasing or not why it is decreasing so that this area under the curve okay it remains constant okay to keep the curve constant now you see this area under the curve it is giving us a measurement of what it is giving us the measurement of the probability of the random variable x okay you will get the measurement of the random variable x okay now you see this is x equals to mu okay so now if you will have to get what the probability where x is what greater than mu minus sigma and less than mu plus sigma for that it is 0.6826 similarly for what greater than mu minus 2 sigma and less than mu plus 2 sigma it is 0.9544 for what mu minus 3 sigma okay greater than mu minus 3 sigma and less than mu plus 3 sigma it will be 0.9974 in terms of percentage also you can write okay this for this part it will be what for this part it will be 68.26 for the next it will be 95.44 for the next it will be 99.74 okay so this is how you can see so this is very simple the normal curve it is extending from minus infinity to plus infinity and the curve is symmetric about the mean that is x equals to mu and the value of fx maximum is 1 by root over 2 pi sigma all right and you will also have to remember that it is a unimodal curve that means it is having only one peak okay when you are changing the value of x on the both the sides in that case what will happen the probability distribution function fx it will decrease rapidly and when this sigma is increasing the value of fx okay maximum it is decreasing so the curve will remain constant and you already know this curve okay the area under the curve it is giving the probability of the random variable and the percentage is given so using these properties only we will solve one question here okay and there are two question in total so this is the basic normal curve and its properties so i don't think it's very tough it's very simple very clear if you have seen the graph you can write the properties directly all right now let's go to the problem so here it is said a manufacturer produces air mail envelopes whose weight is normally distributed with a mean 1.95 gram and standard deviation 0.05 gram the envelopes are sold in lots of 1000 how many envelopes in a lot will be heavier than 2 gram so the question is very simple manufacturer is producing air mail envelopes okay and the weight is distributed normally okay the mean given to you is 1.95 gram and the standard deviation is 0.05 gram so it is also said the envelopes are sold in lots of 100 now what you are asked to calculate the number of envelopes in a lot which is heavier than 2 gram clear this is what it is given to you so first let's see the graph for this okay graphically i'll like explain you then we will move to the problem this is the normal curve right so now you see for this you will see what mu minus sigma and mu plus sigma okay so this position was for mu minus sigma this position was for mu plus sigma this is x okay and this is x this is fx this is how it is written now you see in our case mu minus sigma is what mu is given to you 1.95 sigma is given to you 0.05 so mu minus sigma will be what 1.90 and mu plus sigma is 2 gram now you see from this when you will see from this this area okay for the envelopes whose what whose weight is what greater than 1.90 but less than 2 gram it is given by this area all right and the total area is this one so now first you will calculate what first you know the percentage of envelope between what mu minus sigma to mu plus sigma that is which is what greater than 1.90 but less than 2 gram in this region we know it is 68.26 this is it is it is now from this total when you will subtract this you will get what 
this portion right yes or no this portion you will get but you are asked to calculate it which is greater than 2 g so for greater than 2 g this is the area for what greater than 2 g right this is for the rest one so when you are studying the normal curve properties i have said already that the curve is symmetry so for symmetric curve whatever the value you will get after subtracting from 100 that you will be dividing by what 2 and eventually you will get what the percentage for this particular area and then you can calculate the number just by multiplying with 1000 so let's see this i have explained you so here if you see percentage of envelopes okay between mu minus sigma to mu plus sigma it is 68.26 okay this is 1.90 this is 2 g okay now we will see percentage of envelope having weight having what weight less than 1.90 g and more than what 2 g okay percentage of envelope okay having weight okay having weight less than 1.90 g and more than how much 2 g okay means from the total we are subtracting this area so this is giving less than 1.90 g this is for greater than so finally we will just subtract 100 minus with 68.26 Okay, when you will do so, you can just do and see sixty eight point three. Also, you can write in directly. Okay, so from this, what you will get? You will get the value to be thirty one point seven four percent. Okay, so this is for that particular envelopes whose weight is less than one point nine zero but greater than two gram. Okay, so now you see the curve is symmetric. So therefore. percentage of envelopes having weight more than 2 g that you will get when you will divide this by 2 okay so per therefore percentage of envelope having weight more than 2 g it is equals to 31.74 divided by 2 okay so that is equals to what 15.87% okay you can write since curve is symmetric clear now you see you will have to calculate the number of envelopes okay having weight more than 2 g so it's very clear it is 1000 into with what this is in percentage so it will be 15.87 right divided by 100 so when you will cancel and you will do you will get it approximately to be equals to what 158 done so this is how you can calculate so the questions are not tough just get the parameter and the concept of the curve now let's see the next question so here it is said let x and y be two independent variables each of which follows a normal distribution with the same standard deviation sigma but with means Plus mu and minus mu respectively. Then the sum x y follows a. Yeah, four options are given. So you are having x and y. These are two independent variables. Okay, and they are following the normal distribution. They are having same standard deviation, but the mean for x is what plus mu for y it is minus mu. So you will have to just see the sum of n x and y will have what. Here it is a distribution with two peaks. At plus minus mu and mean zero. So normal distribution we already know for normal distribution there is only one peak. So the first option is not possible. Okay. Second is mean dist uh, normal distribution with mean zero and standard deviation two sigma distribution with two peaks at plus minus mu and mean zero and this. So two peaks is not possible because we know normal distribution is having what normal curve is having it is unimodal. So the first and the third option is eliminated. The option will be either B or C. So now we will see. So for this we will calculate the mean. Okay, the mean for x plus y, and I am denoting it by mu prime. Okay, so it will be what? The mean of x plus by mean of y, right? Mean of x is what? Mu, right? And the mean of y is what? 
minus mu so it is minus mu here this is plus okay so the mean is zero clear so for variance it is what sigma prime square it will be what sigma square x plus sigma square y okay this is for x plus y so for individual we are taking it is given sigma right for x the step uh, standard deviation was sigma so variation will be variance will be what it's square so it is what sigma square plus sigma square that is 2 sigma square finally what you can write the standard deviation sigma prime to be equals to what root over 2 sigma square that is what root 2 sigma clear so it is very clear you are getting what normal distribution with mean 0 and standard deviation root 2 sigma so the correct option is option d clear so this is very important that you need to know about the properties of the normal curve okay lastly we will see the ex exponential distribution so this is just for your basic concept because you will get very less questions but i'm just giving you a general idea for the exponential distribution so the exponential distribution function is given by lambda e to the power minus lambda x x we know it is the random variable okay lambda here it is what it is the rate parameter or you can say distribution rate okay and it is giving us the decay rate of probability now you see fx this probability distribution it is equals to lambda e to the power minus lambda x for x greater than equals to zero and it is zero for x less than zero the mean is given by what integration minus infinity plus infinity x fx dx you can do integration by parts and you will see you will get the value of mean okay mean for exponential distribution is one by lambda variance is one by lambda square so this is about the exponential distribution this is just an outline i didn't go for the deep explanation okay one more thing i would like to add here if you are having two repeated parameters okay suppose lambda one and lambda two okay in that case lambda two will be greater than lambda one okay when lambda two is greater than lambda one then you can see the graph will be somehow means it will be of this pattern this is fx this is x okay so for this if you see lambda 2 is greater than lambda 1 so if this is lambda 1 and if this is lambda 2 okay this is how you will get the graph this is lambda 1 and this is lambda 2 this i have just said you for the normal discussion okay i'm not going very deep i'm telling you back to back again and again this is just for your general idea clear so that's all in this video thank you so much have a good day